Good afternoon to all. Uh, I do appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk about how uh, we need to um, achieve agricultural competitiveness under a low carbon development pathway and share some of the experiences of Costa Rica, the lessons we have learned, and the road ahead. When we're talking about feeding the world, we see clearly a relationship between uh, agriculture and food security, and then how this is affected by climate change. And this is the conventional wisdom. Climate change affects agriculture. Agriculture affects food security. But the relationship is by no means linear. We have many interactions between agriculture and climate change. We have interactions between food security and agriculture and climate change and food security. And this is where the picture gets complicated. Uh, we start getting more complicated things. Agriculture has a three-way relationship with climate change. Agriculture is a victim of climate change through changes in temperature and precipitation that affects crops and livestock. Agriculture is also a culprit of climate change through greenhouse gas production, but agriculture has a whole lots of the things we can do to solve uh, climate change. It's part of the solution because plants are the only organisms capable of uh, capturing carbon. So the reduction of greenhouse gas is uh, certainly a role uh, in which agriculture has a, a say. Uh, but also, of course, we know agriculture contributes to food security, whether through local production or from producing money from exports and buying food in the global food system. But also, food security has an Im impact on climate change. And cl food security, as defined by FAO, we have uh, the different dimensions of food security, availability, access, consumption, and biological utilization. And just to give you an example, consumption patterns have an impact on climate change. We know that, for example, 10% of gr the greenhouse gases produced by developed countries are due to the production, transport, preparation of food that is not ever consumed. It's just going to waste. Waste of food is a big uh, culprit of climate change. But we think that agriculture can feed the world, and that does not need to compromise the environment, or working with the environment does not need to compromise the role of agriculture in feeding the world. But we, need, we, we do need fundamental changes in the way we produce our food. Uh, this concept of climate smart agriculture basically encompasses adaptation, mitigation, productivity, and these three things together brings competitiveness or eco-competitiveness. And the, the word, the key word here is smart ag. Why? Because we can say climate friendly agriculture or use other terms. But the term smart means that this is agriculture based on knowledge whether it is scientific knowledge, technical knowledge, or traditional knowledge. But we need knowledge in order to put this together to this. We'll see why. This conceptual framework uh, will show you why. In the first place, greenhouse gas production in agriculture result in many cases from system inefficiencies. For example, nitrous oxide, one of the main greenhouse gases produced in agriculture, well, nitrogen in the different forms in the soil, fertilizers, have different environmental fate. One of these is nitrous oxide. And nitrogen is put in the soil to produce protein and to boost productivity. But then N2O is nitrogen that didn't go to make protein. So this uh, represents nitrogen that did not contribute to productivity. Therefore, reducing greenhouse gas increase can increase in, in efficiency by lowering the cost, nitrogen that we don't put, or boosting productivity, nitrogen that is more efficiently used. 
Within this conceptual fr framework, the second concept is that agricultural systems provide opportunities for carbon sequestration, both in trees and in soil. And all this are, is very well documented. Mitigation strategies can improve adaptation to climate change through uh, better water management, microclimate modification, especially by trees, nutrient management, and soil organic matter, which makes for better plant growth on the face of uh, climate um, change. But, okay, that's the concept. How do we move from theory to practice to make this change feasible? And that's where knowledge comes. How do we do all this? We need research, we need extension, we need to demonstrate what works and what doesn't. And we're gonna see the, the case of Costa Rica, this is another complicated figure, but uh, gives you the theory of change with uh, livestock. Uh, in Costa Rica, a livestock uh, car low carbon program has these uh, components, live fences, rotational grazing, improved pastures, and improved fertilization. That would increase the number of trees, so that would increase the capture of CO2, and live fences also help us uh, more efficient pasture and, and more efficient use of space, along with rotational grazing. Um, that allows us to increase animal density and pro productivity, improve pastures, we have healthier pastures, better capture of CO2 in soil, lower emission N2O, and also lower emissions of enteric uh, methane. Improved fertilization also lowers the emission of N N2O. And also, the number of trees, because it provides shade for the cattle, when we have very warm temperature, the cattle goes under the shade, that decreases temperature by five degrees Celsius, that's uh, data from uh, a research institution in Costa Rica, and productivity goes up by 10%. Uh, the productivity by animal, whether it is gain weight or meal production. Let's see some data, because that's the theory. Okay, what we have seen with this program uh, is uh, an increase of the animal units per hectare. Uh, up to 2016, we had seen this increase in uh, animal units per hectare. We also have seen a reduction or we can have the tons of, we have the data on the tons of CO2 equivalent captured in trees, within pastures, and forested areas in the farm. And this is the emissions, 99% of which is methane from enteric and um, uh, digestion from the, from the cows. So with the trees, we are able to offset most of those emissions. Uh, we still don't have the data of uh, carbon capture in soil that is being conducted uh, right now, but that would offset the carbon even more. Uh, milk production has gone up with this in these systems also, compared to 2015 to 2016. So it can be done. We have data to prove it. The other um, pilot program we have is with coffee. Uh, and also, um, the main things we're lo looking at in coffee are uh, excuse me, good fertilization practice to reduce N2O, agroforestry system, which is a traditional practice in, in, in coffee plantations and has benefits, uh, and also not only at the farm level but the mill level, residual water from the mill, uh, milling of the coffee we are spraying on, on grasslands instead of uh, oxidizing in lagoons. And waste uh, management, also we are working on that. And I'll show you some results. Uh, we have found that by reduction or by re reduction of rates and better sources of nitrogen, we have reduced N2O by 35% without losing productivity. Uh, we have seen that Instead of composting, which produces methane, we are going to gasification to produce energy, which reduces methane and N2O. And also, 
uh, residual water treatment. Instead of using an oxidation pond, we spray in pasture, and that reduces uh, carbon um, from uh, this amount to this amount, the uh, carbon equivalent per fruit produced or fruit processed, I mean. Okay. This is uh, the main players in this uh, program. We have uh, the, the FOMIN, the Multilateral Investment Fund from uh, the International Development Bank. We have the um, German uh, Cooperation Agency. Uh, these two have channeled funds for this. Um, we have the Ministry of Agriculture, the Institute of Coffee, the, the Cattle uh, Corporation, and the Ministry of the Environment as technical counterparts. And we have Funde Cooperación uh, as the uh, implementation agency that has helped to channel these uh, funds. And these are the producers, coffee and cattle producers, uh, because we, this is focused on the people. And the capacity building has been, been a big focus of this project. 3,000 people trained, 97, 97 pilot farms, and 16 education materials. Thank you very much.